Okay, we're back. Uh, this is a series of tutorials I'm going to start. I've been meaning to do this for a long time. Uh, I'm going to call this Moving Bodies because it's related to a lot of questions I get from students doing interactive installations. Uh, and there's a lot of need for something like what a Connect can do. Uh, so if you imagine having a, a skeleton uh, with body coordinates somehow in a space. Um, but then a lot of questions that I might get um, you know, students think they need something like that, but actually what they need to do is is just a simple detection or or something that's um, much simpler than actually tracking uh, body coordinates. So I want to go through a lot of methods um, that are at our disposal for, for detecting uh, bodies in space and also tracking the movements in space. Um, to start, we're going to do a simple detection just with a webcam. Uh, to see if someone is uh, in front uh, of the camera. Uh, we're going to look at some ultrasonic sensors. Uh, and then I want to play with um, various pose estimation tools that, that are at our disposal. Um, you know, Connect is still great if you have a PC. If you don't have a PC, then, um, you know, there, there's some other options that we have. MediaPipe is kind of based on Python. OKD camera, I've been doing some tutorials recently. Uh, and that's cross-platform. Uh, also, we have the TD Runway is still at our disposal. Um, you know, there's there's pros and uh, big cons for uh, all of these tools, but I hope to kind of show all of them. Uh, also, ZigCam um, doing a kind of body tracking uh, is another option. Uh, but for now, we're going to just do this simple uh, detection with the webcam, and it's really based in um, cache top and doing a difference um, composite. So it's a pretty simple trick. Um, the cache top, uh, if you haven't played around with that yet, I recommend looking up at the operator snippets for it. It can do lots of different things. It's a little bit, um, at first, it's hard to under understand maybe. There's a lot of different parameters that um, you need to kind of look into to, to really understand what it does. But it's a really powerful operator. Um, and what we're going to do now is basically uh, we want to cache an image of an empty space. So if we can imagine, uh, instead of my kind of old printer back here, uh, if this was a gallery space, we want to get an image of the empty gallery. And then uh, maybe when someone walks into the installation space, we want to trigger something, some sort of event, right? So uh, what I've done here is... Um, so by default, the active is turned on on our cache top. So when it's active, you can see um, it is showing in real time whatever is being fed into it. So we turn active off. Uh, and then prefill will kind of update uh, whatever that frame is. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to get out of the way, prefill this cache so it is an empty room. Uh, and I've kind of set up this button here to make it a little bit easier. So this is just when that is clicked, the chop execute uh, pulses um, this right here. Actually, I think I have a replace. Yeah, replace single. Um, so e either one would work. No biggie. So let's do that. OK, and I come back. Uh, and let's let's maybe first let's see what happens. So it's detecting me right now. So let's see if I get out of the frame. Okay. So it's pretty responsive. So whenever I get into the frame, it is detecting me. Uh, and so let's see, it's a pretty simple thread, so let's just go through each one of, uh, of these. Um, cache with the empty environment and the real-time webcam is going to composite. It's getting a difference, which creates an image like this. And we're just doing a threshold, um, doing that on luminance. It's creating just an image that's just white and transparent. Uh, you can play, there's really two spots that we're going to play with thresholds. Um, here in the logic, we're going to play with this bounds value. And then here in threshold, we can play with this this one. Uh, I have it a little bit lower than default. I think by default, it's 0.5, um, which 
like for me that kind of uh, it's not not quite enough pixels I want to have a little bit more pixels to deal with there so I lowered that a little bit um, and then we just go through and analyze top which is giving me the average pixel value um, so between just uh, solid white and transparent it becomes something kind of like this null and then top two and then this right here is basically giving us the that average pixel value uh, and I'm just taking the alpha you know instead of I don't need all of those because they are all the same right so just to simplify things I just just getting the alpha value and from here this this logic is what is doing the triggering so I have this sets um, off when outside bounds I changed the two I created my bounds as being you know greater than 0.05 and up to one so if this value coming in is within that that value so if it's basically above 0.05 this logic is going to be triggered and if I walk out of the frame here in a second Okay, so when I walked out of the frame, uh, you can see that that value went down and logic uh, was untriggered. So depending on your environment, it, it's really about just tweaking this bounds value. Um, if you are in you know, an environment that has it's brighter or there's more variation in, in tone, um, you might want to trigger, like right now it's, it's fairly uh, sensitive, right? Because this is a, a very low value. If I made this, so I can see right now, as I'm sitting in front of this, this value is only about 0.09. So it's really, I don't want to get it too much higher than that. If I did maybe 0.08, let's see. So I just made that a little less sensitive. And you can notice if I go back like that, it is not triggered anymore uh, because this, it's basically uh, the number of pixels here is not high enough. So this is where this logic value in the bounds is where you're, you want to spend some time to really tweak uh, just to get that to just the right sensitivity that is appropriate for whatever environment you're in. Uh, and I just renamed it to be detected, whatever. No, and then you know, really what we care about is this this null right here, which is going to be zero or one. All we're doing is a, a binary trigger. Um, and then I just added this rectangle here. Um, but um, that is ambivalent to however you might use that trigger a sound, trigger some other behavior somehow. Um, and this is a super duper easy system um, that a lot of times maybe that's enough to trigger something. Cool.